Well, today I'm reviewing a microphone boom arm from InnoGear. It's not like I can show you the sound of it or the functionality that it has like I could with a microphone or like an interface, per se. <laughs> Why did I agree to do this? The InnoGear MUPSA28 is pretty much a less expensive Rode PSA1. I mean, the InnoGear product literally has PSA in the name like the Rode product does, which I believe stands for Professional Studio Boom Arm. But this InnoGear Boom Arm usually comes in around $36 to $45 on Amazon. So for this Boom Arm, you are essentially paying less than half versus the Rode PSA1 that comes in at $99. Now Rode, of course, has the newer PSA1 Plus, and that comes in at $129, but that's if you want a completely Rode branded, a little bit nicer version of the PSA1. Now with the InnoGear at half the cost, I would say you are getting something that is about 60 to 70% as good as the Rode PSA1 when it comes to build quality. That's honestly not bad. But this actually does have a couple things that the PSA1 doesn't have. It comes with a little metal tube extender that makes the boom arm get a little bit taller. It also comes with some rubber cable covers. And one thing that is very nice about this boom arm is that it does hide the cable really well with those covers. And also, if any of those covers do get damaged, it comes with a couple extras. The Rode PSA1 just comes with Velcro straps for cable management, which I don't love. But the InnoGear does come with a couple Velcro straps as well. You don't really need them, but they come with it. The clamp for the desk is actually pretty nice. I would say it's far, far better than the cheaper boom arms that you can get on Amazon. Now, since we're talking about build quality, this mic stand is mostly metal, but it does have a few plastic parts as well. Now, a big question that people have for boom arms like this is how much weight can it handle? Can it handle a shock mount and a condenser microphone? You know, what can this baby really do? Well, let's find out. Currently, it's just handling the Shure SM7B so fantastically. As you can tell, it is obviously hanging down. And the one thing that I have noticed about this stand is that if you're trying to get a little extra reach and have it be a little more straight out, I can really try to clamp this down, but it just doesn't quite stay in position. It's close to staying, but it's not quite there. It does a little bit better at just even a little bit of an angle versus directly out. Pretty much anywhere from this angle down to here is a no-go zone. Let me use my gigantic muscles to uh, clamp this baby down and, uh, yep, that's not moving anymore. Not great. I can't really knock it too much for that because I do feel like a lot of boom arms are this exact same way, but it can handle being up top just fine. And the SM7B isn't like the best example of this. It is a little bit heavier, but we're gonna put one of the heavier microphones that I have. This is the Neat King B, the OG edition. And this is a big mic. The Neat King B comes in at about two and a half pounds versus the SM7B at about one and a half pounds. Right now I have the Neat King B plugged in and it is being hung upside down right now with the actual mounting part being at 12 o'clock. Now the microphone is not upside down and this Boom arm is handling it well. With a condenser like this, you're pretty much going to have it going either straight down or straight up. And with a microphone like this, you kind of want to use gravity because it is heavy. It's a big one. But I do feel like this boom arm is doing a really great job holding this microphone. I feel confident in it. I don't think it's going to fall or anything. But now I'm tapping on my wooden desk. It doesn't sound like many vibrations are coming through. But now I'm going to tap the extension tube. And now the base of the mic stand. And now the lower section of the boom arm. And now the higher section of the boom arm. And now the extension tube is gone. Now I'm going to tap the base again. And just so you know, when I tap the actual shock mount, this is what it sounds like. Now let's try it with a microphone that does not have a shock mount. 
Now we have the Fifine K669D mounted on the InnoGear MU PSA28, and it actually feels really appropriate to use this microphone because currently this stand and this microphone are going for the exact same price on Amazon. These are $36.99, so you can get both of these for a little bit under $74, not including tax. Since the Fifine does not have a shock mount, let's go ahead and tap some stuff and see how it does. Quick warning before I do this test, this does not sound great, just letting you know. Right now I'm tapping my desk. And you can tell there's a big difference between the last microphone that had a shock mount and this one that doesn't. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tap the stand. You can tell the five find does not perform well in this situation. And here is the higher section of the stand. Now I just added the extension tube and now I'm just gonna tap that a little bit. Now to be fair, not all microphones are going to perform as poorly as the Fifine just did. The Shure SM7B is going to do a lot better job. For instance, here is me tapping the extension tube with the Shure SM7B. There's a little vibration and you can hear it, but it's not unbearably bad like it is with the Fifine. So that's something just to be aware of and a lot of people will just say, don't hit your boom arm. But sometimes stuff happens, especially if you're like live streaming or something. Maybe you have to move something and you accidentally bump it. You don't really want to have those resonant frequencies be brutal. So there are going to be some differences between microphones and everything. And a shock mount with boom arms like this are definitely helpful. Now to move on from those few tests that I was able to do. One thing that I have done a lot in this review is mention the Rode PSA-1. But quite frankly, I don't even think the Rode PSA-1 is really this boom arm's biggest competition. I actually feel like its biggest competition are those very inexpensive boom arms that you can get on Amazon between like $12 and $20. You know, the newer studio arms. The ones with those dreaded huge springs on the outside. Now I can tell you right now that this boom arm is so much better than those. And you might be thinking, yeah, guy, it should be. It's more expensive. But I will say the difference between this boom arm and the cheaper boom arms is so much greater and so much better than the difference between this Inno Gear and the PSA-1. So I would highly recommend you saving the extra $20 and purchasing this over one of those cheaper ones. Now I feel like there's something that I need to come clean about. There's a little bit of a secret about me and it's, it's pretty dark. And this isn't going to sound very audio gear reviewer guy of me, but I hate desktop boom arms. Okay, that's a little dramatic, but I have tried so many of these and I just dislike a large majority of them. One of the stands that I did like quite a bit was the PSA-1 and also there was the Aure stand that did come with an extension tube like this. I believe that's the BAI-2N. That one's really solid, the road is really solid, but personally, I actually prefer lower profile boom arms. And the one that I love the most is a Vivo low profile boom arm. Well, it's not only low profile, it actually has like a pole that you can adjust where you want it. I think that boom arm is amazing. And that stand is the one that's lasted on my desk by far the longest. And it actually only goes for $70. But the versatility of the Vivo arm is a big reason I love it. I can have it be low profile if I want, and I can also have it boom overhead. Ever since using that, I have struggled with the one size fits all boom arms. And that is one reason I do like the extension on this Inno Gear arm. It does give me a little bit more to work with, especially when booming completely overhead. For my reviews though, it makes sense to have the mic in the shot, obviously. So with my camera angle and my desk height, the low profile just works a little bit better. That way I can show the microphone, but keep the boom arm out of the shot. But I do want to give credit where credit is due. Bark at Obscure Mics did absolutely recommend the Vivo boom arm to me. So the InnoGear boom arm isn't perfect for me, but I kind of already expected that. So you might be wondering, hey, why did you review it then? And that's a damn good question. I do not know.
No, the reason I wanted to try it is to let you know that there is another budget option out there, and I wanted to see if it was any good and if I could recommend it to people that do like boom arms like this. So with that being said, now let's move on to my BBSAR rating. I have the BBSAR up on the screen right now. You can check that out and kind of see what my rating means. And I'm going to give this a 7.5. I want to thank you all for watching this review of the Inno Gear Mic Boom Arm. I hope it helped you out and helped you decide if you want to get one of these. A very big thank you to everyone that subscribes and the biggest thank you to all of the amazing members of the Audio Hotline. There's going to be some more exclusive content coming to the membership here shortly that I'm really excited to put out. And on that note, I'll see all you audio nerds next time. All right, which one do you guys like? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, Grimmy likes the Inno gear. You like the Inno gear? Will you pick the Inno gear too? All right, well, Road is officially dead to my cats.